Hello again YouTube, Mad Dog here, welcome back to my channel. So tonight I thought I'd quickly share a couple of tips, a bit of advice on wool blankets. Stay tuned. Welcome back. So I thought on tonight's little video I'd share a couple of bits of information about wool blankets. Um, I am a big advocate of using and carrying wool blankets and for different reasons. Um, I'm in the garage tonight as you can probably hear there is literally a storm blowing overhead. Uh, I think it's called Storm Dennis this time over in the UK. So um, yeah we're taking a proper battering at the moment but uh, we're, uh, we're holding up at the moment, <laughs> fingers crossed. So. The reason I'm showing this video is <clears throat> over here on the old um, training bench here there's a selection of different wall blankets that I currently um, own. Um, I have several more in different kits. I always include at least one wall blanket, especially this time of year, into my kits. So initially for me the advantages and disadvantages of wall blankets are Primarily, they are fireproof. I say fireproof, fire resistant, which is ideal around a campfire. Their insulation properties are around 80% still true when wet, so their thermal retention is still good even when they're wet. They're surprisingly waterproof or water resistant, should I say, not necessarily waterproof. Um, so, that being said, the combination of all them factors make them ideal campfire insulating blankets. However, the disadvantages come in the form of, for me, being a working class man, A price and B weight. So I'm going to show you a couple of little um, items that you might find useful, snippets of information or different thought thought trains, thought paths you might not have considered. So stay tuned and we'll have a look at that. Okay, so I've brought you in a little closer to this rough selection of wall blankets purely for the reason I wanted to show this with you first and foremost, price point. As we all know, wall blankets, 100% wall blankets can be very expensive, some of them running into hundreds and hundreds of pounds. Starting at 50, 60, 70 pounds around that area for a good quality 100% wall blanket. However, for example, these two check wool blankets here, um, the grey and green, like a tartan pattern there, they are a double size, I've got two of them there, they cost me £15 for them both, so less than a tenner each, 100% wool. This sort of gaydish bright yellow mustard coloured <laughs> um, blanket, just panning it down here a little ways. This one is also 100% wool, <coughs> it's made by a famous brand, I think it's Whitney, uh, Whitney um, of England, which is a famous wool blanket manufacturer over here in the UK. Um, again, this one cost me around 10 quid and this I believe is, it's a lightweight wool blanket so it's not a thick weave wool blanket but it is I believe is it king size or double queen something like that it's very extensive it's quite a large blanket so moving across I've got a more sort of military style blanket here quite rough woven so for me whilst this would make a great under blanket etc it will be quite itchy because it's quite fibrous um, not necessarily heavy because it's only a single blanket but again I think this was about seven or eight quid something like that and I could go on there's lots and lots over here as you can see I also carry wool blankets in all of my kits <clears throat> I'm gonna pan you around here a little ways so especially this time of the year my current setup for going outdoors is this rucksack here and whilst it is a 120 litre rucksack 
and yes it looks massive and bulky and all the rest of it I believe at the moment it's I can hold that up easily with one hand I think it's weighing it around 40 45 pounds at the most with food rations and water so it isn't dead heavy <coughs> and the bottom of that rucksack there is one king size wool blanket as well as my sleep system top cover my um, snug pack sleeping bag everything else everything is in there cookware the full five c's i can do a full weekend with everything in that rucksack so what i'm saying is <clears throat> you don't have to spend a fortune for your wool blankets now where did i get these items so all of these wool blankets that you see here on the bench to include the ones in the dry bags here i've got a a big ass king size sort of olive army green coloured wool blanket 100% wool in there but again that was about eight pounds i have a smaller one in this dry bag stuff sack which is about the size of the one that's in the kit i've just shown so as you can see weight wise not that much <clears throat> and size wise yes volume wise it takes some weight but for the advantage of carrying it I highly recommend it where did I get them all from so truthfully all you've got to do is go on your eBay or Amazon shop especially eBay and type in vintage wool blankets so yes they're going to be used and yes they're going to be vintage they're old however I can get like I've said a king size blanket for £10 over in the UK which would ordinarily cost me 50, 60, 70, 80 and upwards pounds so <clears throat> if you're not too proud about owning pre-used items and let's be honest it's for the field it's outside who cares it, it's going to get muddy it's going to get leafy potentially it's going to get wet mouldy mildewed and horrible <laughs> potentially who knows depending on what you do then for a tenner to have a real good comfortable night's sleep um, I would suggest typing in vintage wool blankets in any of your search engines and getting yourself a bargain you know it's okay buying brand new stuff at 100 200 pounds plus for one blanket I can buy 10 or 15 of those I can use one to wrap myself up in one under my knees if you need to if you want to and it's still costing me less than 20 quid you know about the same price of a curry I believe over here you know it's um, <clears throat> so my next little tip or bit of advice for anybody that does buy and use wool blankets um, it doesn't have to be expensive uh, as I've just explained would be care of them a lot of people are frightened to death of wool blankets because of the care you know the the dry cleaning etc so what I would suggest to anybody that's into camping or outdoors is you want it clean, fresh and relatively sterile because you're going to be sleeping in it. So for the uses of, <coughs> excuse me, I would, I would personally recommend this as a cleaning uh, regime. Wool, don't forget, is basically hair. It's hair off the sheep that's been woven and processed into wool. So it is fundamentally hair. And what our farm works and has worked for many years is get yourself a bucket of lukewarm water, spread a tarpaulin on the ground, open your wool blanket out onto that tarpaulin, weight it down with something, obviously, and then take some standard shampoo, household shampoo. This is my missus's, obviously. I don't need shampoo <laughs> so take yourself some shampoo and um, put a, a few dobs onto the back of a sponge and start working that with a little bit of warm water I say a little bit of warm water work that into your your wool blanket <clears throat> let it very nearly dry and then give it a rub down with a, a cloth and then don't be frightened of vacuuming it you know if you need to if it's heavily debris with soil and leaves if it's just because you want it fresh then go ahead give it a, a light rub down with some shampoo um, very very moist warm water put it on your wash line let it air out beautiful good to go it won't shrink it won't deteriorate because it's hair 
you're treating it as hair. So that would be my advice. <laughs> um, being a tight old sod, and I don't want to spend a lot of money, you know, on wool blankets. You can spend literally hundreds of pounds on these things for one-off branded items. I'm not going to name names, but I think we all know who they are within our field. Um, <clears throat> For a one for one wool blanket, which don't get me wrong, the good quality and it's nice to have something that's nice. But if you can forfeit using something that isn't the dead trendy bushcraft colours, you know, and um, you're prepared to mix it up, whether it be blue, cream, um, mind you, that is a good colour, the brown. And I don't think these are too bad, you know, like the the khaki grey and um, green check. I ain't bothered to be honest. And the yellow, why not for a survival situation kit, you know? <clears throat> so, again, just my take on the wool blanket. As you can see, I do have many. Um, I have another one, two, three, four, five, five kits over the other side of this garage. Uh, they all have a wool blanket included. I have one, two, three, four, I believe, upstairs. And a couple in my loft. There may be one in my shed. And I believe over there in a, another stuff sack, there's another one, as well as all these that I have on the bench. So, that I've gathered over the years. <clears throat> and um, they are long lived. I believe some of these old vintage ones, <clears throat> excuse me, are from around the 30s, <laughs> 1930s. So, and they're still as good today. They really are. It's all about the care of them. And um, so that's my thoughts and opinions on wool blankets. Don't go and blow masses of money on something that, you know, really, you can get them a lot cheaper. If you're only using them once or twice, three times every quarter, say, why not be thrifty and buy two of them and something else in your kit? Before I close, one last opinion. My personal opinion. I would rather have a large square area wool blanket that is of thinner weave than a smaller blanket that is thicker weave and the reason being wool blankets work <clears throat> on the premise of lots and lots of insulating capillaries lots and lots of ways of trapping air around your body so if you have a thin wool blanket that you can fold and fold and fold and fold and, and create lots and lots of air layers between that will be more thermal insulating than one thick wool blanket that you just lay on you if that makes sense so that's my personal preference and also on that a thinner blanket is also easier to get in a stuff sack compressed down and really scrunch the hell out of it to stuff it into your sack <laughs> whether it's on the inside or the outside it, it, it's just more compatible if uh, compressible if that makes sense so um, I'm signing off for now I've rambled on way too long but I thought this little video may show you guys and lasses an alternate way of saving yourself some money and still enjoying the benefits of the wool blanket. I'm a big advocate of them. They're great even for a family man or a family event around a campfire. Throw one around yourself, cuddle up, get warm, and you're not worrying about sparks hitting you and setting you on fire like you would be with a polyester blanket because they won't burn from that, you know. It's a good, safe... Um, insulating material <clears throat> so yeah not much more to be said on that I've rambled on way too long so um, yeah a bit of shampoo vintage wool blankets off eBay get yourself a bargain go back get yourself about 30 of them <laughs> have a great weekend stay safe and hope you uh, stay out the storms over in the UK see you soon mad dog signing off yeah <clears throat>